the Syrian people have endured four years of extremely violent conflict. During these four years, more and more people have been forced to abandon their homes because of the bombing. The only option available to those unable to leave the country is to live in camps near the border, like this one in northern Syria. There are 300 families here. We were given 60 tents during a first distribution, then a further 30, so 90 in all. People sold their furniture and whatever belongings they brought with them to buy a tent or build some form of shelter. Since the beginning of the conflict, half of the Syrian population have had to flee from their homes. There are no medical facilities, no toilets, no drainage systems. Each family gets 15 litres of water. That's not even enough to drink. How can we wash or wash our clothes? Winter makes the lives of these families even harder. When it snows, there's a huge problem. When the snow melts, there's an even worse problem because everything's muddy. Um, everything gets wet, the blankets get wet. Um, you have to heat your, your tent or your home. And um, fuel, the availability of fuel is difficult, but the quality of fuel is even worse. So it's kind of the risk balance. You can't not heat the tent because then everybody will get hypothermia. But they're using this fuel and there's an explosion and the tent might catch fire. Explosions caused by poor quality fuel have become so common that MSF's hospital in Idlib Governorate now specialises in treating patients suffering from burns. In one camp there was a fire that then set fire to a whole group of tents. It happened early in the morning and there were children sleeping in those tents. It's not their fault. People are getting burned because they're trying to keep warm or because of barrel bombs exploding. Since the beginning of the hostilities, medical facilities have been targeted. Their personnel killed, abducted or forced to flee from the violence. And several months ago, some MSF centres were forced to close because of the risk of abduction. Doctors have set up networks in areas not controlled by the government. But they need help, help that MSF is trying to provide. The teams are only too aware from their contacts with Syrian doctors that thousands of people are in need of humanitarian aid. But their scope for action is woefully inadequate.